This is ProBlogger. Hi there and welcome to episode 227 of the ProBlogger podcast. My name is Darren Rouse and I'm the founder of ProBlogger.com, a blog, podcast, event, job board, series of ebooks, and a course all designed to help you to start an amazing blog to create great content for the readers who come to it, find those readers, and to build some profit around that blog. You can learn more about ProBlogger over at ProBlogger.com. Now, in today's episode, we're continuing our series of blogger stories where I'm handing the podcast over to you, podcast listeners and, and blogger readers, to tell your stories and tips of starting and growing your blogs. We started this series back in episode 221, and we've had uh, six episodes since that time, and uh, they've all been from bloggers from different niches. Now, in today's episode, I've got three blogger stories for you. They're all relatively short. One of them's only two and a half minutes. Like in our tech bloggers episode last week, today's three stories all come from bloggers from the travel or tourism space. And I thought it would be nice to put them together because there are some similarities there. And I know a lot of you do have the dream of becoming a travel blogger. So I hope you'll find some ideas in today's show. Now, this is all part of our a series of podcasts all to help you to get inspired to start a blog. So if you haven't started a blog yet, we encourage you to join our Start a Blog course, which starts on the 10th of January. You can head over to problogger.com forward slash start a blog and find out more about it. It's completely free and uh, there's an opportunity there to put your email address in and we'll let you know when that course goes live on the 10th of January. More about that at the end of the show today. I want to hand over now to our three bloggers and I'm going to just jump in in between each of the stories just to pull out a few of the thoughts that I have about their stories, a few little tips and a little bit of further listening for you today as well because they do mention some things that I find quite fascinating. I'm going to hand over to our first blogger now who is blogging uh, American accent but living in Turkey and blogging about Cappadocia. Creating great content, finding an audience, building engagement, monetizing your blog. This is ProBlogger. Hi, my name is Duke Dillard. My blog is Captivating Cappadocia, and it focuses on the amazing Cappadocia region of Turkey. The URL is www.captivatingcappadocia.com. Cappadocia is in the center of Turkey and is an ancient region mentioned a couple of times in the Bible. We were living in Ankara before. I had just finished a master's degree and had decided to move to Cappadocia. During my MBA, I had been researching blogging and started thinking about doing a blog for visitors to Cappadocia. I thought it would be a great way to meet lots of people and motivate me to get the most out of the area. We moved here in July 2011 and I started the blog in September. I had been reading all I could and gathering resources. I had the name and a logo and tagline and had written a few posts. One weekend I got away, put it all together, setting up the host, getting a theme, setting the parameters and plugins, all the technical stuff. I had been anxious about it, but once I got to working on it, the site came together nicely. I didn't have much money, so did it all myself. In the end, I was happy for the learning experience. In doing research, I knew I couldn't compete with the big travel sites like TripAdvisor and Booking.com. I tried to discern what advantages I would have as a resident. I also knew I wanted to spend time with other local residents and not tourists. As I thought about a niche, the idea came to me that what only I could offer would be the backstories of the Cappadocians who were serving the visitors. So we write about hotels and restaurants and tours and sites and activities and have some list posts. But our bread and butter is telling the stories of the owners and managers and guides you'll meet when you visit. How great is it to check into a small cave hotel already knowing the personal story of the owner who is checking you in? How much easier is it to form friendships that can last a lifetime? One of my best friends here owns a small hotel. He's traveled to Australia, New Zealand, and America himself and stayed with people who stayed in his hotel. That's the kind of place Cappadocia is, and our blog helps make that happen more often. Recognizing this niche gave the blog a real focus, and for that I'm grateful. It has allowed me to meet tons of people and has opened doors all over the region. I'm also glad I built the website myself since I love to learn and enjoy process. Understanding how a blog works and forcing myself to learn some basic coding gave me more confidence when things went wrong. I didn't have to call or write someone and be at their mercy. But probably the most beneficial thing I did early on was connect with as many turkey travel bloggers as I could find. 
There were a number of people around the country doing blogs about their region similar to mine. I wrote them and asked if they would go through Darren's 31 days to building a better blog book with me. We could do it all together, I said. I think five agreed, and we spent the next month doing the daily activities and reporting to each other about them. It built camaraderie, encouraged all of us, and really helped our blogs. Building that community early on was very powerful, but it didn't save me from some early mistakes. Doing everything myself, I messed some things up sometimes. A few times I was making a change to the child theme and shut my whole site down. I made some changes, tried to open it on the browser, and got an error message. I freaked out, to say the least. Fortunately, I was able to figure out what I did wrong, but it was stressful for me. The biggest mistake I made, however, was not putting my domain and hosting on auto-renew or my credit card. I thought I had, but one day I went to open my site and got nothing. After running through the house like my hair was on fire, scaring my wife half to death, I logged into GoDaddy and thanked God that there was a grace period, paid the bill, set up auto-renew, and then made a reminder to double-check whenever my credit card expired. I still sometimes log in and double-check that auto-renew zone just to be safe. Overall, the blog's been a huge boon. It hasn't made me financially rich, but I have made a little money, made many friends, received lots of thank you emails from happy tourists, and have enjoyed lots of free stuff in the region like hot air balloon rides, hotel stays, tours, meals, ATV rides, and on and on. Best thing to do in a tourist area is to promote everyone and have no competitors. As I look back over the last six years of blogging, I've been blessed. Here's my very practical tip to those thinking of blogging. I was thinking of saying something like, find your passion, or do what you love, or don't do it for the money, but that sounded way too cliche for me. The most helpful and practical step I took was to get a program called Mars Edit, which only works on Macs, but there are equivalents for Windows. It allows me to manage my blog from my desktop, even offline. Having a way to write, publish, and archive on my computer without needing to be in WordPress is quite handy. If you're considering starting a blog, I pray it brings you as much joy as mine has. You're listening to Pro Blogger. That was Duke Dillard from CaptivatingCapradocia.com. Beautiful part of the world. I spent some time there with Vanessa uh, probably 10 or so years ago now, even further back than that, and uh, I have vivid memories of a hot air ballooning experience we had there, which I'm sure Duke will have written about. I wanted to include Duke's story today because it shows, I guess, some of the other opportunities that blogging can bring. We quite often talk about profitable blogging, and profitable blogging, of course, brings to mind money, which which we are, uh, certainly do some teaching about. But I love that this story, I guess, really illustrates um, the the rewarding experience that it can be to have a blog that really is helping people. And I particularly love in, in Duke's story, the idea of storytelling being such a big part of what he does. And I've seen this time and time again used with great effect in blogs from all kinds of niches where people really tell the stories, not only of themselves, but of different people. And I love that that Duke's blog really tells the story of the the owners and the guides of that particular area. And I can imagine going to that particular region, having read Duke's blog, it would really bring alive the experience there and have a massive impact. And uh, it would be the type of blog I'd want to read again and again. Now, if you want to learn a little bit more about storytelling, we've got a great episode back in episode 81, uh, where I go through 14 types of stories that you can tell on your blog. I'll link to that in today's show notes. I also love the tip there from Duke of connecting with other bloggers in the niche. Now, you could quite easily look at other Turkish travel bloggers as the competition, but Duke really has stumbled upon there a very powerful thing, and that is when you work and get to know other bloggers in your niche, the opportunities that come from that can be quite amazing. And this is something I've experienced for myself. When I started Pro Blogger, I began to reach out to other bloggers. Pretty much anyone who was writing on a similar topic, I would reach out and get to know them. And some people you connect with naturally and some people you don't, but the ones that you connect with and the the ones that you build a relationship can quite often become collaborators. And uh, many of the people that I reached out to in those early days or that reached out to me and that that, um, we became friends with ended up being partners in many ways. I've promoted their blogs and their products as an affiliate and they've promoted mine. And whilst you could see them as competition, they're actually everyone grows as a result of those relationships. And so I love the idea there of Duke joining with those other bloggers and particularly doing something together. 
and uh, doing the 31 Days to Build a Better ebook um, is great. And we've actually got a, another course coming up after the start of blog course that would be great to go through as a niche. And so I do encourage you to reach out, whether it's doing something at ProBlogger together or whether it's just getting to know um, each other is a very powerful thing. And that tip there of checking your domain name that it's on automatic renew, please double check that. I had exactly the same problem. My first blog, I never renewed and uh, I didn't get it back. It's gone now, unfortunately. Unfortunately, lucky it wasn't a, a profit blog, um, but I do grieve the loss of all that content. I'll also include in the show notes today um, at problogger.com forward slash podcast forward slash 227 a link to Mars Edit. It's a tool that I love and uh, use every day as well. Okay, that was Duke's story. Today. Next, I'm going to hand over to Diane Bortoletto from Traveletto, uh, who's another Aussie blogger, different accent again today, and uh, she's going to tell you her story too. Creating great content and building your audience. This is Pro Blogger. Hello, my name is Diane Bortoletto from Traveletto, traveletto.com. Traveletto.com is a blog about delicious travel adventures with a bit of an emphasis on Western Australia and Perth where I live, um, Margaret River where I love and Italy that I'm just obsessed with. Um, I started the blog because I was living in Rome back in 2007. Yeah, it was more than 10 years ago and blogging was pretty new back then. Um, Not many people had a blog and I started it, can you believe it, on something called Microsoft Live which it was just horrible, but um, yeah, a platform that doesn't exist anymore. And I started because the blog was a way of sharing my stories and adventures and things that had happened to me while living in Rome without the need of sending um, lengthy emails with lots of attachments with photos and, and whatnot. So that's why I started the blog and I got such a big surprise when other people started reading the blog. People I didn't know um, reading, they were commenting yeah, so that was that was pretty cool. Um, it was probably only about a year after um, Microsoft Live that I moved everything across to WordPress, and that was the best thing I've ever done. So I'm grateful for WordPress. If you're starting out blogging, don't even consider anything else. WordPress is the way to go. Um, it might take a little bit of time to learn it and get things set up. You can pay someone to do that for you. Um, It's not that complicated, a bit of trial and error, um, but yeah, nothing else compares. Um, A mistake I would suggest bloggers avoid, all bloggers, not just new bloggers, is never, ever, never, ever, never, never change your permalinks. I changed my permalinks based on some bad advice. It wasn't even advice. Someone commented on a Facebook post that I shared um, on a on the Pro Blogger Facebook page uh, a couple of years ago, and and this person said, change your permalink, take the date out of your permalink. Google doesn't like it and penalizes you for it. So I thought, oh, so I went into the back back end and changed my permalink to remove the date, and it broke my blog. My traffic went from 130 visitors per day to three, like it, and it's taken a huge effort, major effort to reverse that. Um, I've had to pay someone to help me get things back on track and, you know, build the audience up again and it's happening. Um, I'm almost there, but yeah, never change your permalinks. Um, the good things that have happened since I started my blog is that my blog's been discovered. Look, admitted, admittedly, I'm more of a hobby blogger. I don't put in a huge amount of time or effort into my blog. I don't really monetize my blog. I kind of use my blog more as a, a marketing tool for what I do. I, my day job is public relations. Um, and But the good thing that's happened since I started the blog is that my writing has been noticed. And I've picked up some freelance writing um, jobs as a result of that. And now freelance writing is a STEM, a new career STEM, if you like. Um, yeah, and something that I'm, I love to do, and I'm focusing a bit more of my efforts in, into building that side of my career. I've filed for Broadsheet; they found me on the blog via my blog. I filed for Redbull.com. Um, I've got a regular 
writing gig with a magazine in Margaret River, um, and that's been going for you know, two or three years now. Um, so, yeah, there's been some good things that have happened. I've been invited to a few events. Um, but like I said, you know, I'm not positioning myself as an influencer. I'm not, you know, going to great lengths to build a huge following on social media or an audience. Um, yeah, but still, you know, there's been good things that have happened since I started my blog. Um, a tip I would give to new bloggers is to find your voice. Find your voice. Don't try to be someone else. Don't try to be something you're not. Be you and find that voice and, you know, think about how you want to talk and communicate with your audience. You know, what sort of language are you going to use? Will it be quite formal and structured? Is it going to be very chatty and informal? Um, find the things you're passionate about and write about those and blog about those. I'm sure a million people say that passion is key. Blogging is a huge time investment, huge. And it's, you know, never a five-minute job to put a blog together. Um, and if anyone tells you otherwise, they're lying. Um, it's It takes time. So uh, time, it's a commitment. So be passionate about what you're doing, you know. If you don't really care about what you're writing about, no one's really going to care enough to read it. Um, so find your voice, find your passion, and blog about that. That's all I've got. Um, thanks very much. Um, yeah. And uh, enjoy the blogging journey. You know, I'm sure you'll make friends along the way online and then hopefully in real life. Thanks. Bye. How to build and monetize your blog. This is Pro Blogger. That was Diane from Traveletto.com. I like Diane's story, partly because of the Aussie accent, of course. Love to support Aussie bloggers. But uh, I love the idea of bringing together um, a blog about delicious travel adventures. And I guess the first thing that stood out to me as I listened to her story is that really it's a bringing together of two other niches. You know, we have travel bloggers and we have food bloggers. And Diane sort of brought those together. And that's one way of making your blog stand out a little bit from all the other blogs in the niche. And I'm sure there's a lot of other blogs out there that do uh, write about Perth, um, where Diane's from, and um, Italy. Um, but bringing together the food aspect of it is one way to just, uh, I guess, add a little more flavor, pardon the pun, uh, to, to what you're doing. And I've seen that used many times over. So if you're struggling and thinking about, should I do this topic or that topic? Is there a way you could bring them together in some way to make you more distinct? Um, her story there about changing the permalinks on a blog, that is something you definitely want to be careful about. And if you're starting a blog, this is a really good time to make that decision about your permalinks. And I too would encourage you to not have dates in your permalinks uh, if you are starting starting a blog. Set it up that way so that you've just got the keywords that you're trying to rank for. And that's something that we can talk about in the Start a Blog course. But if you do want to make that change, it is possible to do, but just don't make the change straight away. Do the research. And really what you're wanting to do is to redirect all the old links to the new ones. So if you are getting the dates out of your permalinks, that's fine. Just research how to do 301 redirects to get from the old ones to the new ones and double check it and get someone else involved if you're not confident in doing that. I also love uh, Diane's story, and this is something we've heard a number of times in this series of how blogs open up other opportunities. And whilst Diane's not making a lot of money as a blogger directly, she's used her blog to open up opportunities to uh, for her other work in uh, PR, but also in writing services. And this idea of using your blog to open up freelance writing opportunities is one I want to hammer home because this is a big stepping stone for many bloggers. Now, this is probably more for those of you who are already started your blog, but if you are looking for a new income stream for your blog and you're in the, those early days, this is one that I see many people using. They actually, as they're building up their audience, um, and that uh, is almost like their writing resume that they're then able to use to get other writing jobs and to get attention from other potential employees. And uh, they do that freelance writing, sometimes forever. In fact, I've met a blogger recently who's made making over $100,000 a year from freelance writing work, uh, and he's be barely blogging anymore because he's become so well-known in his niche. But 
often people, um, bloggers, do use this freelance writing as a stepping stone to other full-time work from their blog. And so they might do some freelance writing to supplement their income while they're also building up their traffic on their blog to get it to a point where it's able to make a full-time living. So be open to that as you go along. And lastly, that advice from Diane to find your voice. Don't be someone else. You've got to find your own unique, distinct uh, writing voice. And that really comes through experimenting with different writing styles, but it also just comes with practice. And so you've got to be at this for a while to really feel comfortable with your voice. And so I really do encourage you to, to build up that archive of content, experiment with different styles of writing, watch to see what connects uh, well with your audience, but also uh, watch to see what gives you energy as a writer as well. Okay, our last story today is a really short one, just goes for two and a half minutes, and uh, I'm just going to hand over to Chris to tell his story now. You're listening to Pro Blogger. This is Chris Christensen from the Amateur Traveler blog and podcast at amateurtraveler.com. I started the podcast in July of 2005 within the first year of podcasting. Ironically, I thought I was late getting into podcasting at the time. And then I started the blog a while later, and one of the reasons I started the blog is even today, where my podcast numbers are over 100,000 downloads a month and my blog numbers are 45,000 page views a month, some people in my industry still just don't get podcasting and blogging is easier to explain to them. I think what I hoped for was more travel. I hoped that somehow I'd be leveraged this into either more income for travel or more travel opportunities. The first is happening, although slowly, and the second, which is definitely happening and in a big way. And I'd have to say I'm most grateful, actually, that I started the podcast because even though that's been harder to explain, it's an area where I have been able to stand out in part because I started so much earlier. And so now when people go to the amateur traveler, we talk about a destination a week and we've talked about just hundreds and hundreds, almost 600 different destinations by now because we started so long ago. The first mistake I made and the most obvious one besides the name amateur traveler was that when I started, I thought I was going to be talking about my travels, even though I was podcasting 48 weeks a year and traveling four weeks a year. And that math just didn't work. The show turned into an interview show. And if it hadn't, it would have stopped. So one thing I would say is make sure you have content going forward. Make sure you have a plan for where you're going to get ideas for more content because my plan just didn't make sense. So I mentioned it's led to some interesting opportunities. It's led to some strange opportunities. I got invited to the Obama White House for the Travel Bloggers Summit. I was invited to be paparazzi for the Pope with an official press pass in Jordan for a day. If you went to get a job with the Foreign Ministry of Thailand, you'd be required to listen to two episodes of Amateur Traveler and graded on your understanding of the English in them. And then on top of that, lots of trip invitations like, would you like to come on this cruise or would you like to come to the Yukon and land on a glacier? So some amazing opportunities have come from the blog and podcast. In terms of a tip for new bloggers, I would say it's probably as important to figure out who you are not for, who is not your audience, and just not worrying about doing content for that audience. So in the travel space, for instance, I just don't talk about the fly and flop vacation. We're talking about culturally deep kind of travel, and that means we're not the right podcast for some people. We're not the right blog for some people, and that's okay. Sometimes this is important to understand who is not your audience. This is Pro Blogger. That was Chris Christensen from AmateurTraveler.com. Now, the mistake he mentioned, I think, is well worth um, mentioning again. Make sure you have enough content going forward. And uh, I love the fact that he pivoted really quickly there when he realized that the um, the schedule that he'd set himself and the type of content that he wanted to create just wasn't possible. He was able to pivot there. But this really reminds me of that exercise that was recommended in yesterday's um, podcast of really brainstorming those topics that you're going to write about before you start your blog. You want to really do that work to work out whether you are able to sustain it. Such an important tip um, that was given yesterday and reinforced, I guess, I guess, today. But 
I guess the the other thing I'd say about that is if um, a, as you're blogging and as you realize that maybe what you had thought isn't quite working, it's okay to pivot. It's okay to make those changes. And I love that Chris was able to do that too. And that tip that he gave of working out who you're not writing for is just brilliant as well. And this is something that a lot of bloggers do struggle with. We want to please everyone. We want a large audience and we want anyone to read our blog. But when you try to cater for everyone, you end up with very kind of vague and, uh, and, and diluted content. But when you work out that I'm just writing for this type of person and I'm not writing for that person, I'm not writing for the other person over there, I'm just writing for the one type of person you're able to really serve that one type of person so much better rather than trying to please everyone. And so this this idea of really narrowing your focus to a certain type of content, to a certain topic can be a very powerful thing. And you've heard this time and time again over this series of people really, their blogs really taking off when they narrow their focus down and, uh, and really just concentrate on serving a particular audience and not everyone. Such a powerful thing. Thanks so much to Chris, Diane, and Duke for sharing their stories today. We've got five more episodes coming in this series over the coming week. Um, I do encourage you to look out for those. Also, if you are thinking of starting a blog, and all these blogs started by someone who didn't have an audience, um, they didn't really know what they were doing, and they started out, many um, many of them, many years ago now, um, we designed this course to really shortcut that process and help you as a blogger to start a blog with good foundations. So I encourage you to head over to Pro blogger.com forward slash start a blog, uh, pop in your name and email address and we will reserve a spot for you in this course and let you know uh, when it goes live on the 10th of January. And over the coming few weeks after that, we encourage you to uh, consume the content. We've got seven modules there for you to work through. And uh, once you've done that, we're going to give you an opportunity to highlight your blog to our audience as well, to let the world know what you started and hopefully to help you find a few readers and to celebrate all of the new blogs that start as a result of this. There are hundreds of people who've already signed up for that free course, uh, problogger.com forward slash start a blog. Thanks for listening. Chat with you tomorrow with another story from an amazing blogger. You've been listening to Pro Blogger. If you'd like to comment on any of today's topics or subscribe to the series, find us at problogger.com forward slash podcast. Tweet us at problogger. Find us at facebook.com forward slash problogger or search problogger on iTunes. This episode of the ProBlogger podcast was edited by the team at Podcast Motor, who offer a great range of services, including helping you to set up and launch your podcast, as well as ongoing editing and production of the podcast that you produce. You can check them out at podcastmotor.com.